Oh, we're not live on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. Before we get underway, we'd like to start Gracias with a brief... Gracias por estar con nosotros antes de que empezamos. We'd like to start with a brief message from Gilbert Martinez from our communication staff for our Spanish-speaking viewers. Gilbert? Buenas tardes y bienvenidos a la sesión informativa organizada por la Supervisora Hopkins y la Doctora Mace. Esta sesión informativa se está transmitiendo en vivo por nuestro canal de YouTube con interpretación al español. Para escuchar la versión en español, puede usar el link de YouTube que se encuentra en la página de Facebook del Condado de Sonoma. Gracias. Thank you so much, Gilbert. I'm Linda Hopkins, Supervisor for Sonoma County's 5th District and Chair of the Board of Supervisors. Welcome to our COVID-19 and vaccination update for Monday, February 1st. As the rollout of vaccines continues, Sonoma County is committed currently to prioritizing those who are ages 75 and above in the distribution of vaccines. Given some recent confusion about getting appointments, I want to explain again why this is our top priority. I know that the governor did announce a few weeks back that those 65 and above would be moved up on the state's priority list. What he didn't make clear is that counties still have the ability to prioritize those age 75 and above if they felt the need to do so in their communities. This is what counties such as ourselves, Contra Costa, Ventura, and Santa Barbara have, con have chosen to do. The question is why, right? Everyone wants to know, especially those who are under the age of 75, why we are prioritizing the 75 and older group. First of all, Sonoma County is known as a retirement destination, and we're actually home to roughly 102,000 residents who are 65 and older. That actually represents about 25% of our total adult population. Each week right now, the county is receiving roughly 6,500 vaccines. And some of those vaccines, by the way, are not just the first doses, right? Some of them are actually earmarked for the follow-up doses. So each new vaccine vial that rolls in doesn't necessarily mean being able to vaccinate someone who hasn't yet been vaccinated. Based on that, it's just not possible to work our way through this group in a fashion that is clear and equitable. So we've opted to begin with the 36,000 residents in our county who are age 75 and older. But I wanna explain why these people are our number one priority. And the reason is because those are our residents who are most at risk. Nearly two thirds of our residents who have died since the pandemic began nearly a year ago are 75 and older. In addition, January has sadly been the deadliest month of the pandemic so far with 103 deaths here in Sonoma County. Those in this age group need vaccinations as quickly as possible. We realize that it's difficult, but some of us can wait a little bit longer before we get our vaccines. We are in safe situations at home. Many of these people, 75 and older, are not. They're at risk every time they go out in public. We need to vaccinate them now. In addition, this group, and I hate to generalize, but I think it's safe to say, is also the least tech savvy of our community members and thus the least able to schedule vaccinations online without assistance. We want to get them to these folks early so that we can help as many individuals as possible. And there are resources out there that are helping these individuals get appointments. We encourage everyone to go to socoemergency.org slash vaccine, where they can find information on other options besides their primary care physician for getting a vaccine. Finally, I also do want you to know that our healthcare partners, such as Kaiser, Sutter, and St. Joseph share this commitment to those 75 and older and are also prioritizing this age group in their vaccinations. And finally, just one personal request, which is that, you know, if you are not 75 and older and you know someone who is 75 old and older, please consider reaching out to them, give them a phone call, ask them if they've gotten their vaccine yet, direct them to the resources. And if they have trouble signing up, maybe you could even assist them. So we can all do our part to try to help take care of the most vulnerable members of our community right now. And with that, I'm going to turn to my colleague, Vice Chair Chris Corsi. Thank you, Linda. Before I go to my notes for this briefing, I just want to say that I'm sorry to the thousands of people who were confused and disappointed um, with the events of the last few days. That was certainly not our intent to confuse or disappoint anyone. But we're in the middle of a health crisis with a lot of fast moving information and facts that frankly change on a daily basis. Those, this is a chain of, of individuals, of private companies, of healthcare institutions, of governments from Santa Rosa and Sonoma County to Sacramento and on to Washington, DC. It doesn't always run smoothly. Mistakes get made and I'm going to guess 
that more mistakes will be made because we're trying so hard to get this right. My commitment to all of you is to keep trying and to make sure that we do better every day. Meanwhile, thank you for your patience. I know it's tried sometimes. So once again, to emphasize what we are trying to do here is take care of the most vulnerable, the most at risk first. We don't have enough doses for everybody to get, get the vaccination right away. So we've made some decisions based on, based on the demographics, uh, the science, and the, the medicine, and the advice that we're getting from folks who, who know more about that than I do. In the county of Sonoma this past week, we've had five more deaths reported. Three of those five people were over 75 years old, so 60%. We know that even though people over 75 make up only 10% of the population in this county, they represent almost a third of the deaths that we've experienced. So as frustrating as it is for all of us who are younger than 75, and even those of us, including me, who are between 65 and 75, we feel we're making the right choice to double down right now on our folks who are 75 and older. As many of you know, this commitment, commitment was tested last week when we discovered that because of glitches in a website um, for scheduling appointments at the new OptumServe location in Ronit Park, we, we had a lot of people who were able to book appointments who didn't meet the threshold that we had set for 75 and older. That kept thousands of people in our most vulnerable group, vulnerable group, 75 and older, from getting those appointments. People who made the appointments who were under 75, actually each one of those appointments prevented someone over 75 from getting the, the vaccines that were intended for them. So we decided to cancel all the appointments that were made by people under 75. We announced it at a news briefing on Friday. The, the official cancellation notices went out today. We had to make that difficult decision because if we didn't, we were running the risk that some of our oldest residents might not be getting the first and second doses until late March or April. We believe they need those doses now. One of the most consistent questions we've been getting from those 65 and older who, who made appointments and who didn't make appointments, from all people 65 and over, wonder when they're gonna get appointments now. Looking at the numbers, we expect that will happen sometime in late February after the folks who are over 75 uh, are, are vaccinated um, but with both their first and second doses. We've also been hearing from those who had their first dose at OptumServe and are now concerned about having their second appointment rescheduled. We understand that this is confusing, but unfortunately many people were allowed to schedule second doses too soon after their first dose. Okay, another glitch. Some were scheduling second appointments just a week after the first, instead of waiting the, the required 21 days between doses of the the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. So OptumServe has to reschedule second appointments as well. We want to assure any of you who had that first dose that no action is required on your part. The appointment for your second shot will be scheduled with a new appointment in the coming days. If you have a conflict with that second scheduled appointment, you'll get a phone number and be able to speak with someone at OptumServe and they'll work that out for you. Finally, we wanna talk about those who've heard about the Sonoma County Office of Education postponing about 150 school staff that are ages 65 and older with postponed those vaccinations. Again, we did this as part of our commitment to vaccinate the most vulnerable by ensuring that as much vaccine as possible gets into the arms of those 75 and older. County Superintendent Steve Harrington was notified over the weekend that the county believes uh, the Office of Education 
can launch its vaccination campaign, their site in just two weeks. So thanks for your time and attention. Again, we're working hard to make this right. My commitment that it's gonna get better every day. It has been, believe it or not. And at this point, I'd like to turn this over to Dr. Sundari Mays. Great, thank you so much, uh, Supervisor uh, Kersey and Chairwoman Hopkins and everybody else on this call, plus everybody who's listening. Um, I wanna speak a little bit about our case rates. Our case rates still remain high. And uh, as Supervisor Corsi noted, we are still seeing a high number of deaths. But we do continue to see indications that new cases and hospitalizations may be declining. We still have a very high transmission rates and we do remain in the state's most restrictive tier of California's blueprint for a safer economy. Uh, Sonoma County's adjusted new case rate per 100,000 residents is 34.3, and that's well above the seven new cases per day per 100,000 that we need to move into the less restrictive red tier. Our testing positivity rate is now 8.3%, which is close to the 8% required to move to the next tier. On the other hand, the test positivity of those in the lowest quartile of the Healthy Places Index, uh, the measurement of COVID-19 equity, response equity, is 13.3%. This also needs to be less than 8% to move to the next tier. As you know, and we've been talking about, um, vaccines are still not widely available. Because of this, we encourage you to still continue all of the mitigation practices to keep our community safe that we've been discussing. Wear your mask or your facial covering. Maintain the social distance from people that you don't normally live with in the household. Don't gather in groups of non-household members and wash your hands frequently. For now, these practices are the fastest, most effective way to reopen our schools and our economy and reduce transmission of COVID. And here's another key tool to helping us to move out of the purple tier, get tested. People are not getting tested nearly as much as they were around the time of the holidays. In fact, the demand for testing has dropped. We are still conducting more than 3,000 tests per day with an average of 616 tests per 100,000 residents per day. And our testing volume is higher than the state median. But right now we're getting a factor of 0 0.8 for our adjusted case rate for this additional testing. But we'd like to get that um, multiplication factor lower to 0 0.6, maybe even 0 0.5 by testing more. So I encourage you to go to socoemergency.org and um, to get any more information about testing sites, how to make an appointment. We still have seven lanes of OptumServe in Windsor, in the Santa Rosa Fairgrounds, in Petaluma that are there just for people who want to get tested. And getting tested remains one of the most important tools to help us reopen our economy and our schools. I did wanna um, clarify quickly uh, something that was said in terms of the uh, percentage of people over 75, um, who, the percentage that make up the mortality of the death in the county by showing a very quick um, slide. Here we go. So um, let me just make this a little bigger here. Um, Again, this really shows why it is we're uh, prioritizing people who are 75 and older for the vaccine. Um, many people get sick from COVID, but this is the group that has the worst outcomes. As you can see, this is for whole of California state and this is for Sonoma County. Deaths among adults age 75 or older account for two thirds, 65% of the COVID-19 deaths so far in Sonoma County. And over half or 53% of the COVID-19 fatalities statewide. Um, and again, in Sonoma County, we have a much greater proportion of people who are in that category of being 75 and over about 36,000 people. This is exactly why we need to prioritize this frail elderly group to get the vaccine first. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, turn this over to Dr. Shende, our vaccine chief, to talk more about vaccines. Thank you, Dr. Mace. So as of today, the latest update shows that overall 45,861 vaccine doses have been administered in Sonoma County. 
The number of residents who've received their first dose is up to 23,824. The number who are fully vaccinated who've received both doses is up to 8,819. For a complete list of the clinics that we have available, you can go to socoemergency.org slash vaccine. Today, I just want to focus on those clinics in our county where those 75 and older can get a vaccine. Seniors 75 and older are encouraged to schedule an appointment either through their primary care provider or uh, as their first option. But in addition, the county is setting up vaccine clinics to target this population. So current clinics are, number one, Rohnert Park Community Center, that is the OptumServe site, um, Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can schedule an appointment online at, uh, if you go to socoemergency.org, you'll see it, https slash myoptumserve.com slash COVID-19. The Sonoma County Fairgrounds Grace Pavilion, um, in partnership with Safeway, will have um, clinics open on February 2nd, February 3rd. Um, currently, those are the open clinics that we have, and they're 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Oakmont Burger Center is open for Oakmont residents, in partnership with Safeway, February 4th and 5th, and February 8th, 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. West County Health Centers uh, at Guerneville School on February 1, 3, and 5, and Annalee High School on February 2, 4, and 6. Again, only for specifically for over 75 throughout Sonoma County. Sonoma Valley High School in partnership with Sonoma Valley Hospital, February 5 to 7. Um, and to schedule an appointment, you can go to socoemergency.org slash vaccine for links on how to make appointments at these sites. Future clinics for seniors 75 and older are targeted for the Petaluma campus of the Santa Rosa Junior College, Huerta Gym in Windsor, Cloverdale Citrus Fair, and Sonoma Veterans Building. These don't include vaccinations that are already being administered in Sonoma County through hospitals and healthcare providers such as Kaiser, Sutter, and St. Joe's, as well as those administered through our federally qualified health centers and through the federal partnership with CVS and Walgreens which is responsible for vaccinations at skilled nursing facilities and residential care facilities. As I said, everyone is encouraged to go to socoemergency.org slash vaccine for up-to-date information on the progress of the rollout, as well as information on options for how to get a vaccine, as well as how to volunteer. As we said earlier, we all need to work together to get our most vulnerable vaccinated. And in some cases, the best help we can offer is to be patient. As we've mentioned earlier in this um, news briefing, the big issue is that we just don't have the vaccine supply to reach everybody right now. And we have to be patient and we must uh, make sure that that vaccine is offered for our most vulnerable population. So again, we ask everybody's patience. Please understand that we are really working hard. We are trying to uh, reach everybody um, and uh, it, it's just going to take a while. Um, but we have everybody's best interests in mind. Um, thank you very much, everyone.